What's up guys? Uh, if you follow fishing here in the Bay Area, you'll know that the salmon season this season has been, been pretty good. Uh, with a bunch of people catching fish all the way from Half Moon Bay Area all the way up north past the gate. So uh, I've been lucky enough to get on a little bit of the action. Uh, if you want to check out those videos, I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, I've caught a few from friends' boats and from kayaks. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty fun. So in, in one of my previous videos, I uh, asked you guys if you wanted to see what I use when I'm trolling for salmon. And uh, the responses were pretty positive, so I think I'll go through it here. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll uh, do my best to answer them. So first things first, I'll go over the uh, setup that I use for uh, fishing for salmon. Um, so this is a G Loomis 9 foot medium action. Um, it's got a real soft tip and uh, it's got a good backbone too, so you can definitely uh, carry a good amount of weight on this one. Uh, one thing I like to do, or I, I like to have in my rod when I'm fishing for salmon, is a nice flexible tip because you are using barbless hooks um, and you want to have some give in the pull so that there's always at least a little bit of pressure on the fish when you're bringing it in. Um, just gives the fish less chance for them to shake that hook. And paired with that rod, I have a Abu Garcia 6500C3 with 20 pound mono. Um, I like to use mono when fishing for salmon. Again, so you have a little bit of stretch and it'll make it easier to keep a little bit of pressure on the fish when you're bringing them in. As far as rod and reel goes, this is a little bit on the on the pricey side. So I wouldn't, you, you definitely don't have to spend this much. This is probably $200, $300 uh, rod and reel combo. Um, you definitely don't have to spend this much. Anything I'd say in the nine foot range when it's got a soft tip, um, Will, will work well for salmon. So I'll leave a link in the description below on for this one and then also maybe a, a less more or less expensive more um, affordable rod that, that would definitely compare to this one. And then as far as the size of the line I got 20 pound mono on this main line. Um, this is definitely a little bit on the light side so I would say anywhere from 20 to 30 pound is good good range for fishing for salmon. That's about it for the rod and reel setup, so let's get into the baits. Okay, so all the salmon that I've caught this year have been on two two rigs. One of them was a watermelon apex, and uh, the other rig that I've been using is a cripple anchovy, which is just this little thing here. I'll go over it in a little bit. Okay, so first one is the apex. So uh, it comes in a box like this. I'll leave, oops. I'll leave a link in the description below for all of these uh, products, but basically it's just a little lure and you're uh, I'll, t I'll show you this one. So as you can see this one's got some use here Caught some fish on this one. So basically the line goes through here through these little holes here And then you got your hook on the bottom so it come when you're trolling it's just shim shimmering through the water like so You know going through the water uh, and all it is, you got your leader, and you just attach that goes all the way to your pole. Now, uh, that's the first one, that's the Cripple Anchovy. Um, when it comes in the box, I'm actually not sure how heavy the line is on here, but I do like to retie it just so I know that all the knots are good, um, and I got good line on there. So, for all these rigs, anywhere from... I would say 20 on the lightest end to 40 pound test you use for trolling. Um, there are some big fish out there, 30 pounds and above, so you want to make sure your, your gear is uh, up to par. So basically on this one, the main thing is you want to pay attention to which way the line goes through the, the holes here. So um, starting on the top, goes through this first hole and then underneath, down through here and then up, up this hole and then back down here. And then there's the hook. So this line actually slides through. So when you you get a fish, it'll this line will the lure will come up the line a little bit, and then your fish will have room to play. So that's the first one. Um, second rig that will that I've been using um, is this crippled anchovy rig. So it's kind of a unique little thing there, but basically it's just a little thing for your you put the oops, put a frozen anchovy inside this little casing goes in like, like so and then um, 
there's a pin here that holds it in place. So once you got the anchovy in there, you put that pin through, and then that holds that anchovy in inside there. And so on this one, same thing, you want to make sure your line's going through so it'll, it threads through the head right here. And then it comes back through this little hole through the pin so that you don't lose the pin. And then out this other hole in the back. And then that's where you got your, your hooks. And on this one, I like to use two hooks. Um, important that you, oh, one other thing when you're fishing for salmon here in the Bay Area, you got to use barbless hooks. So you want to make sure that there's no barb on there. You can see that cut the barb off. So on these, I rig one hook through the back of the anchovy, and then the second one just dangles off the end. And some people like to put a rubber band around the end to uh, keep it snug on the anchovy. I find that the thing that even without the rubber band it still works. So either way. Um, oh, and then one more thing with this one: once you thread the line through this little ring here. You'll stick a toothpick into that hole and then break it off. So you stick it in there and then break it off. And that will hold the line in that little thing so that it doesn't slide back and forth. And so you'll see when, when you set this up, that's the key when you're, you got your bait out there. You don't want the hook sliding back and forth easily so that when they're trolling, the, the hooks or the line is snug in there. So those are two rigs. Um, and then the other thing I, I was gonna go over, which I've been using is a flasher. This is a watermelon uh, flasher. They have different colors in these. There's chartreuse, whatever, just straight chrome flashers. And this is just, you put this in front of the bait and this will attract the fish in. So basically you see there's, you know, big piece of metal or sorry, a big piece of plastic dragging through the water with that flash on there. That'll bring the fish in and they see your bait and they'll attack that. So yeah, I'll put this, you can put this in front of the Apex, in front of the Cripple Anchovy. Uh, I got FBR here too, you can put that in front of that. Um, so yeah, this is just like to attract the fish. I kind of like to think of this as like, um, kind of like fish scent you'll put on the bait. It's kind of similar, similar idea here. And so what you might be wondering is, you know, I got all this on the line. I got either this or without fish will hit it either way. Um, and you got your lure here at the end, your apex or the uh, cripple anchovy. Um, but there's no weight. So when you're trolling, you're going to have some weight in there. So one um, option for you, which is I think is the easiest uh, or the best way to do it. Not always the easiest. You can't always do it like this way, but... Um, if you have a downrigger set up, that's the easiest way. You just clip your line in, drop the downrigger down, um, and that'll you'll be able to control your depth that way. Then when the fish hits it, the line pops out of the downrigger, and you don't have to worry about any weight on it. Um, so that's the easiest way. But sometimes you don't ha either you don't have downriggers, or if you're on a kayak, putting you can put a downrigger on a kayak, but it's a little tricky sometimes. So um, the other way is with this uh, sinker release. So basically what this is, it's got a little hole in there and then you slide your weight, you pull this, slide your weight in there. All right, so you got your weight in there and then this, you can put this on your line ahead of your flasher or ahead of your bait, your cripple anchovy. And then when the fish hits it, once you pull on this side, this, uh, this bar will come out and it'll release that sinker. And one, one of the drawbacks in this one is anytime you get a fish, you'll lose that sinker, which can get pricey, and, and it's not a, not a big fan of dropping all this lead into the bottom of the ocean. But it is effective, and once you lose that sinker, you're just fighting the fish straight up, no, no weight, so that's always a good thing. So yeah, that's about it for uh, my setup as far as salmon goes. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below, or if you see anything that I've missed, um, go ahead and leave that as well. Uh, I'm always looking to improve my my uh, tactics here as well. So, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so already. I do expect or I do plan to get out back out for some more salmon before the season ends. So, uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.